what's happening guys and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys had such a great time viewing some of those gallery images as much as I had shooting them. I mean this guy is just so agile but for today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Voyager Class Comic Universe Bludgeon. Now before we go any further I first of all must say a massive thank you to Toy Zone Z for helping me to track one of these down. Without his help this video today would just not be possible so much much appreciated my friend. Now as we very quickly take a look here at the packaging we get some great artwork I mean bludgeon has such an incredible design so I'm definitely very excited to see as to what they've cooked up for this legacy release but as we come around here to the back of the box some really nice product shots as well as that legacy evolution poster now this is one of the final legacy figures that I have left to check out for year two I'm wondering as to what kind of poster they're going to cook up for legacy year three as in my opinion this was peak transformers this was excellent I mean the amount of easter eggs they scattered throughout this was just insanely cool to kind of put Tarn and the Nemesis head slap bang in centre was just fantastic and I mean come on the hype was real when we saw that Armada Optimus Prime tease but here for the top of the box we get the scan me for tech specs and that pretty much wraps it up here for the packaging so all that being said let's get bludgeon out here let's see how he stacks up alongside some of the other legacy evolution figures and see whether or not he is a pickup or a pass. And here we have the Comic Universe Bludgeon. Now this guy is directly inspired by how he appeared as part of the Transformers IDW series. Now personally I've regarded so far some of these Comic Universe figures to be the best entries as part of Transformers Legacy so far and for those of you who I'm sure may have noticed already this is in fact a remold slash repaint of the Voyager class Comic Universe Tarn. A figure which I regard as being one of the best releases in the past decade. So already I knew this guy was going to be fantastic but for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the character of bludgeon to kind of summarize him up in a nutshell he's basically a super sick samurai decepticon so because for the most part this is a repaint i think it would have been excellent had they maybe remolded some of the armor plating that you guys can see to better resemble that of a samurai i mean for example had they changed these here to samurai gauntlets that would have looked better and i think it would have been nice maybe to have remolded the hip skirt so that it could have hung slightly further over the thigh pieces but besides that i mean check him out this just looks so killer the face sculpt is insanely detailed i mean the mouthpiece in particular is just sick and the color deco on this guy is awesome i think i may even be preferring this to tarn i mean it just looks so cool i love kind of the burning magma orange that we've got embedded within the chest really does throw me back to transformers rise of the beast scourge and the slender finger design looks awesome i love how sleek he is especially here for the thighs and the shins and as we spin this guy around here to the back to be quite honest you wouldn't think this guy could transform Form, he is so clean there is next to no excess tank kibble and he is stacked I mean look there are barely any hollow spaces on this guy so I mean if you weren't able to track down Tarn this definitely by no means would be a bad addition to the collection and to be fair for a bludgeon I'm still incredibly impressed despite some of my qualms with the lack of retooling I do think he does look awesome now in terms of articulation the head is on a ball joint so it can look up and down tilt side to side as well as rotate left to right I mean the poses that you can get this guy in are quite literally off the scales the shoulders can rotate the full 360 hinge out to the sides unfortunately they still look a little strange much like we saw from Tarn but you can kind of work around that especially depending on how you position this guy as I'm sure you guys may have noticed in the opening segment of this video we do get a very nice bicep rotation technically due to transformation this additional hinge joint which on Tarn I kind of found annoying but for bludgeon it absolutely works in his favor because it really does help you to get him holding his katana with both hands which is fantastic we do get a 90 degree bend packed into the elbow wrist rotation as well as some fantastic articulation packed into the fingers I mean the second I saw this on Tarn it immediately cemented this guy as being one of my favorite molds of all time we do get a great waist rotation and despite my qualms with the lack of retooling in regards to the hip skirt I have definitely got to appreciate the engineering so if you kick these forwards check that out the hip skirt actually goes along with it and isn't just some ugly flap hanging over the top so yeah I mean that is fantastic and not to mention that is a sick range it can also kick out to the sides and again the engineering is awesome the way it actually moves along with that joint is sick we do get a very nice fire rotation as well as technically a double bend packed into the knee due to how he transforms and then finally the foot can pivot forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side so overall in terms of articulation in terms of detail this guy is awesome and if you loved Tarn then I think you're going to love Bludgeon because personally I think the color deco and in particular the head sculpt really does help to just set him apart and I think in a pose this guy may even look slightly more badass. 
Now, as we take a look here at Bludgeon's accessories, one thing which I never noticed on the original Tarn is that if you spin this bad guy around here to the back, you can actually take the tank turrets, which we'll see later on. They are removable, and bang, you can turn them into a pair of batons. So, technically, Bludgeon can bludgeon his victims to death. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Additional weaponry for this guy to have at his mercy. And then as part of this guy's Evo Fusion gimmick, we do get these massive cannons. Now, these are asymmetrical in terms of their design. We get this great kind of internal burning magma orange packed on the inside. You can Evo Fusion these weapons together to kind of go into overkill mode, which to be fair, I actually think looks kind of cool. You can also peg this onto the side of his arm to kind of give him this G1 Megatron-esque fusion cannon, which also isn't a bad look. Or alternatively, and my personal preferred look, is snapping these onto the back and kind of creating these over-the-shoulder cannons cannons which just looks crazy i mean this guy on the battlefield could single-handedly annihilate a herd of autobots but they're not even the best because we also get bludgeons katana or sword i'm not too sure if it's a katana but considering it's a samurai i would imagine it to be so i mean this is fantastic this is completely brand new the only new accessory that he does come with but really nice metallic silver it's actually made out of hard plastic i was not expecting it to be as firm as it is and he looks great wielding this i mean so cool especially if you do kind of use those transformation joints which I showcased previously and you can also sling this over his back which to be fair also isn't a bad look for this guy so yeah he is definitely maxed out in terms of weapons he has cannons he has batons he has a katana this guy is quite literally armed to those gnarly teeth now, as we check out a few comparisons, here we have Bludgeon stacked up alongside the Legacy Tarn. And damn, do these guys look great. I mean, to be fair, I think Hasbro could even take this mold, smack on that Legacy Prime Universe RC head sculpt, and I'd even be lapping that up because it is just such a killer mold. I mean, these guys look great. In terms of which one I prefer, honestly, guys, it's so difficult to decide because I love the super vibrant color scheme that we're now getting out of this Bludgeon, but Tarn also is so cool. I think both of them equal equally are as badass as each other. I think I'm going to leave it as that, but as we just spin them here around to the sides, you can see the differences in terms of the paint apps. I mean, as I said previously, it would have been even better had they retooled some additional samurai plating here onto Bludgeon, but do you know what? For the most part, I still think he looks pretty impressive. Here is how he stacks up alongside the War for Cybertron Siege Voyager Megatron. Bludgeon may even be cooler looking when in comparison to Megatron. I mean, that design is just so nice. Here is how he fares alongside the Earthrise Optimus Prime. And as you guys may recall from my original Tarn review, I do regard these two molds as being the peak of some of the most recent Transformers generation figures. I mean, hands down the best transforming G1 Optimus Prime that we've ever seen with an exception of the masterpiece. I mean, this is just killer. And yeah. Yeah, this Tarn slash Bludgeon mold just takes Voyager class to a whole other level in my opinion. And then finally, if Paramount decide to maybe put Megatron on the back burner for the next live action movie, I wouldn't mind seeing Bludgeon being the main kind of Decepticon villain in a live action Transformers movie. So here he is alongside Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. And honestly, guys, I would not mind at all seeing these guys go head to head in combat. I mean, we saw how brutal this Optimus Prime was towards the end of the Rise of the Beast movie. Would he be a great match here for Bludgeon? I absolutely think so. Now, as we get stuck into this guy's transformation to kickstart things off with, I do like to come around here to the back, take these sections, bring these here all the way down until they do soft snap here into place, where you can then flip this guy back around here to the front, take the fists, rotate these here all the way around, and then take these green panels and bring them to the insides of the arms just like that. So do the same here for this side, rotate here at the fist. What we can then do is take this arm panel, bring this section here around, Flip this guy back round here, and then you're going to want to take this back section, disengage it away from the tank treads, and then rotate this section here all the way around just like that. What we can then do is come here to his chest piece, lift this section up, and then take these tank treads and bring them here out to the sides. Now, you're going to want to arch these back, I'd say roughly to that far, because if you push them back any further at this point, you may run the risk of popping off the chest piece, which unfortunately is an issue that I've encountered with my copy. But now what you're going to want to do is probably 
probably the most challenging part about the transformation is to bring this head here backwards and on the underside is a tiny little tab and at the same time slide it into this notch. Now as you guys can see already this chest piece loves to pop off on my copy so yeah that does kind of suck. Let's see if we can successfully get that there to slide in and up and bang. Yes yeah, so it did work. It is possible but it definitely does take a little bit of getting used to. We can then fold this head here all the way back so you do reveal the chin. You're going to want to make sure you do this because you do run the risk of some clearance issues in just a second. Now that we've done this we can bring these treads here all the way back just like this and then come back up here to the top. This section is going to snap into this little slot that we have here so peg that into place and as I said the chin should hopefully slide on the underside here of this piece. The next step that I'd recommend to do would be to come here to the feet fully straighten these out and if they haven't done so already make sure that you take that kind of secondary hinge joint to get that double bend as I showcased in the articulation segment and disengage it and kind of hinge it here out to the side. One side locks in slightly tighter on my copy not too sure if that may be the same for you guys so yeah just make sure you disengage that and then snap these two here into place we can then kind of bring these knee joints here upwards to get them out of the way because now what you're going to want to do is take the shoulder joint rotate this section here around and then come here to the bicep rotate this section around and then utilize that additional kind of hinge joint that I showcased during articulation to create this really weird kind of bend once you've done that we can then open this piece here of the tread up and this is basically going to slide in there and then this panel will snap over the top once you've done that that tiny little slot will peg onto a tab on the side of his thigh just like that so snap this piece here into place and do the exact same here on the opposite side so definitely a very involved transformation for this guy so bring that panel down open the top piece of the tread up bring this section down until that does snap there into place and it is fighting me a little bit then we can snap this section here back over and then utilize that slot on the top of the forearm to peg that there into place make sure that everything is straightened up just like this now on the top of the tank we do get these little tabs here and here which are going to slide into a whole host of slots here on the inside so for example these are going to peg into there and then these ones here are going to peg into there so utilize both of those knee joints to kind of line this up perfectly just like that give everything a good old squeeze and then for a few finishing touches we can bring back in that massive cannon which I showcased previously and these little tabs will just slide into the notches that we have here on the back and bang, here we have Bludgeon fully transformed into his pretty killer tank mode. And yeah, this guy looks great. Unfortunately, there are no new pieces here to check out at all besides the color scheme. But it does look pretty ferocious, especially with that kind of internal magma effect that they have going on here with the main turret, which yes, still is articulated. So you can rotate it the full 360, have him absolutely decimating Autobots on the battlefield, which I thought was great. Sadly, he still does suffer from the visible hand syndrome as well as the static tires. I have no idea why they sculpted these in yet they do not roll personally I think that kind of sucks especially for a Voyager class release and they were two of my biggest issues with the original Tarn mold so it's a shame that at the very least they never gave this guy proper working wheels because for the most part I hate to say it but he's basically a glorified paperweight I mean you can't roll him along the ground which does kind of take the enjoyability out of him but in terms of weapon storage you can take the sword and peg it onto any of the ports that you guys see fit so yeah I mean at least the tank looks great but personally I think it's really in his robot mode that this mold comes out to play. Now as we check out a few comparisons in tank mode, here we have Bludgeon alongside Tarn and I think for tank mode Bludgeon definitely has the upper edge, I just think the darker colour scheme kind of goes along with the war torn vibe that these characters kind of give me a little nicer because yeah the orange is great in robot mode and great for Bludgeon but just in terms of my own personal preference when I think of a tank I think of something dark and formidable like what we're seeing here with Tarn and not these super vibrant kind of burning orange colours that we're seeing here with Bludgeon but yeah both really nice decos, I'd love to know down in the comment section below out of the two who do you guys prefer here is how he fares alongside that siege war for cybertron megatron which unfortunately has a terrible tank mode i am so hoping that considering this mold is coming up to be around five or six years old now that as we go into legacy year three and you know maybe for studio series 86 that we can see a new megatron because yeah this just isn't too great especially when in comparison to the tank mode here for bludgeon slash tarn and then finally here he is alongside earthrise optimus prime and i think i said it in my 
original Tarn review. These guys look like great opponents to kind of go up against each other. So, yeah, I would definitely love to see one day these two in live action alongside each other. Bludgeon taking on that Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime design would just be insanely cool. Because, yeah, I do think he would be a worthy match for Optimus Prime. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Legacy Evolution Voyager Class Bludgeon. Personally, I think it's again a great figure. I mean, as I kind of said towards the beginning of the video, yes, I would have loved it had Hasbro taken the retooling just a little further to kind of give us some of that samurai plating that we all expect and associate with the character of Bludgeon. But this guy is based on Voyager Class Tarn. So already, I knew it was going to be great regardless. They could quite literally give me this mold in poop colours and I'd probably gush over it all day long because it's just so fun to pose around, especially with Bludgeon's new sword accessory. I mean, the poses I was able to get this guy in, I was geeking out every single time I was looking through my viewfinder. I mean, he's just so fun and such a blast to mess around with. The face sculpt looks killer. The transformation is definitely quite complex for a Voyager, but the tank mode looks great, but it's still a shame to see the visible hand syndrome and the lack of any proper rolling wheels, especially for a Voyager. That is something that I would have expected, but if you missed out on Tarn, then yes, I could not recommend tracking this guy down and Enough. And even if you have Tarn and just in the slightest you're a fan of the Bludgeon character, then I would definitely recommend to check this guy out because the mold is just awesome. And this time with that new head sculpt, new deco, and new sword, yeah, I'm so glad that this is my first Bludgeon figure. I'd love to know down in the comment section below what do you guys think of this release. And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks.